Hey, what is up you guys? Welcome back to my channel. This is probably the first time you are seeing my pink hair. Yes, it was a very impulsive decision and I have been so busy with these true crimes that I have not uploaded the vlog that that is in yet. So, it's pink. Anyway, welcome back to another true crime. This one is the second to last one. This one is for Friday and it is so creepy, you guys. It's probably one of the my favorites from this week because it is just so crazy and genuinely sounds made up like it sounds fake because it's so creepy but without further ado let's just get right on into the video so today we're going to be talking about anatoly moscovin and this did happen in russia so i just apologize if i am pronouncing everything wrong in advance but Anatoly was a very, very intelligent man. He had multiple PhDs. He was a college professor. He spoke 13 fluent languages and he specialized in folklore and fantasy, things like that, and was a self-proclaimed graveyard expert. He was fascinated by the dead. He was fascinated by graveyards to the point of where that was his entire life. Everything was about dead people. He claims that he started this interest in dead people when he was 13 years old and walking along the street. Apparently, this group of men came up to him and basically forced him to go to this little girl's funeral. She was 11 years old. Her name was Natasha Petrova. She had died from accidental electrocution. They had forced Anatoly to go to this funeral and the mother of Natasha actually wanted Anatoly to kiss her daughter. Obviously, this is a little weird. This might scare any little kid. Like, it is a dead body. It is a corpse. Like, it would be a little freaky. But he did it, and then he did it again and again, and kind of thought that, like, this was, you know, this was kind of cool. Natasha's mother actually had wedding rings with her and gave one to Anatoly and said that they were now married. Um, and I do want to preface that this story is told by Anatoly, so it could be a big fat lie and it could be 110% the truth. I really have no idea. It's all kind of just his word. But basically, after this had happened, he started getting these dreams that Natasha was in. And it got to the point where he was having them every single night. He couldn't sleep. He wanted rid of them. They had taken him to the doctors who weren't doing anything. And he was just kind of starting to get a little creeped out by these dreams because he really felt like she was visiting him. He felt like it was real more than beyond just a dream. And apparently Natasha's ghost or whatever she was in the dream told him that if he could get someone's tooth and give it to her, she would go haunt them instead of him. And apparently he got this kid's tooth who he didn't like in school and offered it to Natasha and the dreams went away. Um, again, I don't know if I really believe that. I would really like to know how you get your enemy's tooth. I don't think I could do it. I don't know many people who could, but according to him, he did. So after that, he was obsessed with anything dead, with corpses, with people who had died, with graveyards, with coffins. He was just totally infatuated by this and he really started dedicating his life to it. So like I said, when Anatoly really got up into his adulthood, he was very, very intelligent. He loved to read. He was very well age educated. He had multiple degrees. He spoke 13 languages fluently. He was a college professor and he was kind of like a self-proclaimed expert in cemeteries and dead people and graveyards so then his this author actually approached him who was writing a book about cemeteries to do his research for him so this was kind of like a dream job for anatoly and he spent every single day in graveyards and cemeteries he would study the people there their lives before when they died he was obsessed with it i believe he walked over hundreds of cemeteries he would walk up to 20 miles a day and instead of going home, he would actually sleep in the cemeteries. He would drink the like the puddle water to feel more close with like the earth and like where he was at. On one occasion, there was actually a coffin for a funeral the next day, but there was no body in it. And he was like, okay, like perfect. Here is a bed. And he actually slept in the coffin. So then in 2009, people started kind of seeing that their loved ones 
graves kind of looked like they were being messed with, looked like someone was digging by them, and were kind of becoming a concern. So obviously they were reporting these offenses to the police and nothing super exciting was really coming from it. And this went on for two years actually of people reporting that their loved one's graves had been messed with or tampered with. So then in 2011, police were actually investigating a different crime. People were vandalizing the headstones of Muslim people who had died. And they were investigating this and because people, you know, did think Anatoly was a little weird, he had been caught in graveyards before by police and they would suspect him of messing around with the graves and after he would say his credentials and that he was working, they kind of just brushed it off. But he was kind of someone that they wanted to look into for the vandalism of these headstones. They ended up actually going back to his apartment. Eight police officers went back with Anatoly to his apartment and as soon as they walked in, they could smell just dead bodies, like dead, rotting bodies. So when the police got there, there were these human dolls everywhere. Some of them were dressed in vintage clothing. Some of them had knee-high boots. Some of them had makeup on. Some of them looked more like dolls than others. And obviously the police were a little creeped out by this. They just thought it was like a weird collection until one of them actually went up and went to touch the doll. And it started playing music. That's when they kind of realized that Anatoly had been grave robbing and taking these dead bodies back with him and turning them into dolls. They had discovered that these dolls were actually the dead bodies of girls he was grave robbing. They asked Anatoly and he actually confessed like that, that yes, these were real people. And he had said that he loved them and he was so lonely that he knew that they were calling to him and they wanted to be taken from their grave and warmed back up and he would actually keep them at the graveyard after digging them up and preserve them with salt and baking soda to help them from decaying bring them back to his apartment which i just think that's like super interesting think of the amount of work it would go to to dig up a grave and then take the body back home with you is does anyone know i should have looked this up i just thought of this i don't i think only in the u.s it's a thing to bury people six feet underground i know in france and i think in all of europe they just like put the coffins at like the top of the ground so is i wonder if in russia i feel like that would i guess make it a lot easier to not have to like dig up the entire thing so after after Anatoly would get them home, he would stuff their bodies with rags, wrap their faces in nylon, and then put on a doll face onto their faces to make them look like dolls. They found rags in all of these dolls, they found clothing in some of them, they actually found their own headstones in some of them, pieces of their headstones, and in one of the bodies, they found a dried human heart. These bodies ranged from the ages of 25 to 3 years old. And he thought that he was just felt so sorry that they had died this young and that there would somehow be a science or a magic eventually to bring people back from the dead and that he was helping them from decaying before that would happen so that they would be preserved well enough to be brought back from the dead. Sorry guys, my camera battery died. So like I said, he would take these bodies home and he thought of them as his children. Anatoly was actually celibate and Russian adoption agencies would not let him adopt. So this was his very creepy way of having kids. They He celebrated holidays with him. He celebrated birthdays with them. He really thought that they were his children. They found 29 human dolls in his apartment and some of them were actually in his like trash cans out in their garage. So the police believe once they would decay too much or they would be smelling too much, he would get rid of them. So even though there were only 29 bodies, they actually believed that he had tampered with over 150 graves. So like I said earlier, Anatoly did live with his parents at this point and his parents actually had no idea that these were real people. They just thought that they, his, their son had a creepy doll collection. His dad ended up having a heart attack after he found out and his mom had to be hospitalized due to shock. 
so I really don't think they were lying. I mean, that is just above and beyond for them to be lying about it. So even though Anatoly really hadn't committed any crime to a live person, he obviously was charged for this. He was charged, I believe, with only over 40 counts of 11 different crimes. But after he was taken into custody, he was diagnosed with schizophrenia and they ruled that he was not well enough to stand trial. So he was given five years in prison, which actually was reduced to nothing and just put in psychiatric care. In 2011, he was actually up for being released. They thought that he was good to go. I do believe that this got overturned and I do believe he is still in the mental hospital. I believe he's around, I'll double check, but I believe he's around like 45. I think he's in his 40s right now. Who knows if he will ever be released. A lot of the families whose children or whose loved ones were dug up think that he should have gotten life imprisonment. Some think he should have gotten the death penalty. When he was receiving his sentence, he actually turned back and looked at them and told them that he loved them and gave them a better life than they ever could. That they had left their daughters out in the cold to rot and he had brought them home and warmed them up and loved them. And one of the families actually thanked him for this. They said that he had given their daughter a great afterlife and she had given been given more of a life in the afterlife than she ever had when she was alive, which is just, I mean, like, ugh, so weird. But like I said, he was up for being released into home care and out of the hospital in 2011 but he was not released. So I do still believe that he is in psychiatric care in a hospital. Who knows if he will ever get released. In my opinion, I don't think he should ever be released. He got to the point where he was so good at digging up these people's graves that he could make it look like no one had ever touched them. So I definitely think that he could go back to doing this. But that is all the information I have for Mr. Anatoly. Let me know what you guys think of this case. This case is so weird so spooky i don't know let me know what you guys think i think this is so weird so creepy like i've said a billion times but that is all of the information that i have for you guys today so stick around for tomorrow's video which is the little finale of our spooky week um whatever you know we want to call it if you have any suggestions please leave them down below because i definitely want to do this again next year thank you so much for watching and i will see you in my next video